Hey, listen, I'm going to read something to you. And I want you to be prayerful, saints of God, because this is, going, this is going to touch some folks. And it's going to touch folks, and the Lord does not look. I'm not a judge. Nobody can judge you for anything. You have to decide what you're doing, why you're doing, and who you're doing it for. Amen. You understand what I'm saying now? Because it's going to come hard now. It's going to be, it's going to be, some, it's going to be some people are going to have to lift their feet up. Yeah, because their toes is getting ready to get stepped on. But God said, look, this is, we need this. Why is that? Because Brother Easter, while I was talking about it, time is coming to a close now. Yeah, yeah. You have to know that the church cannot stay here much longer. Yeah. It cannot. Listen, I, 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 I was reading something to try to figure out how long it's been since Jesus left. And what I came up with, now, I don't know if these numbers are right, but they're close enough that it, we need to pay attention to it. It says here, it's been approximately 1,990 years since Jesus said he would come back for the church. Mm. Think about it. He's on his way back. Yes, he is. Listen, because he told us what to look for. He told us what to prepare ourselves for. Yes, and saints of God, if the Lord comes back and finds us uh, wanting, that's, that's one of the expressions, you know, if he finds you wanting, he's going to want you to work on those things. So we need to hear what the scripture says. And then we decide how we want to approach the scriptures. We are in the world, but not of it. All right, now listen to this. Uh, I'm going to, well, actually, I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I'm going to Enoch. All right, brother, there we go. Enoch, it's the eighth chapter. Uh, it's on page 30. Eighth chapter, verses one through four. And I'm going to read them. And I want you to hear what the Bible's saying. This is Enoch talking. Enoch is in heaven now. He's being instructed by the angels now on God's instruction to instruct him. So what you're hearing now is coming right from heaven. And I want you to understand that, that whatever you hear now applies to us now. Okay? So listen to this. Now it says here in uh, verse, verse one of chapter eight, it says, Azazel taught humans to make swords, knives, shields, breastplates, and showed them metals of the earth and the art of alchemy and bracelets and ornaments, the use of antimony, antimony and paint, the beautifying of the eyelids and the use of all types of precious stones and all sorts of dyes. Then, listen, Wickedness and immorality increased, and they disobeyed God and disobeyed, and everything they did was corrupt. Mm -hmm. Listen to what's happening here. Mm -hmm. This corruption was introduced to mankind by the devil. Now, listen to what I'm going to say to you. The things that are going on now with the AI and all of the things that are being added to the things that are, have already been, these things that are being taught to men are spirits, and they are demonic spirits. People are calling them aliens because they don't want to identify as what they are. But God said in his word that these evil spirits are in the earth, and they're here to disrupt you and to change everything that God intended for man. Now, this is what I want you to understand. Um, let me just read the rest of this, and then I'll go into to our lesson. It said that he's going to name it. These are the names of the angels, these fallen angels that corrupted mankind. San, San Diego taught the spells, portions, and root cuttings. Amoros taught the resolving of, of, of the resolving of spell potions. Arachiel taught astrology. Mm. Cocobel taught the constellations. Ezekiel taught the knowledge of the clouds. Arachiel, the signs of the earth. Samsiel, the signs of the sun. Sariel, the course of the courses of the moon. And as humans perished, they sight, they cried out uh, with their voice to reach heaven. So again, corruption was introduced when iniquity set in on earth. Now I want you to listen to what I'm getting ready to say because Elder, Elder uh, 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 King already mentioned this. When God created Adam and Eve. He created Adam and Eve just the way he wanted them. There was nothing different about Adam and Eve until iniquity set in. Listen to what I'm going to say to you. They didn't change. They didn't add anything, and they didn't take anything away. 
they were pure and holy and righteous the way God made them. Okay, now you don't see lions, you know, just use tigers. You don't see tigers trying to change the stripes. Huh? No. You don't see the leopards trying to change the spots. Huh? You don't see any other creature that God created trying to change what God made them. Amen. This is what I'm trying to say to you. God never <coughs> intended for mankind to do the things that men are doing today in the world. Yes. Now listen to what I'm saying yes. because this God created Adam and Eve. We don't know how long they were. They were naked. Mm -hmm. They were naked and comfortable being naked mm -hmm. because they were created that way to be what God made them to be. And that's what they were up until iniquity set in. Yeah. And it came to a point that when the enemy those fallen angels came to earth. They taught men, listen, they taught men how to make weapons of war. But there was not going to be any war. There was no, because of war and all that came from the iniquity that set in on Satan when he was up in it, when he was Lucifer. So now we're in the middle of a, of, of a, of a uh, uh, um, we're in an environment now that is made up of nothing but destruction. Yes. Hatred, bitterness, wars, fighting. That's why we can't seem to get along with one another because the devil, and I'm telling you, saints of God, that's why we need Jesus Christ because when yes. people come at us, it's not them. No. It, 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 these, look, it's when Lucifer left heaven, see, he, he left with one third of the angels. So what I'm saying to you, saints of God, these spirits are here in the world to disrupt everything that God created. It is the truth anyhow. Now, we're going to get down to something here. I want to read to you. Now, keep in mind, all these decorations that people do now were introduced into the world, and they were here when we got here. This is, now, you got it, this is going to be sensitive, but I want to give it to you. And then listen, Brother Istawa testified, Elder King spoke on it. And I was sitting back there because I didn't want to do this. <laughs> and the Lord was saying, there's your confirmation. Oh, you. So you're going to hear what I heard. Amen. And then you're going to have to do with it what God needs you to do with it. Amen. 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 I listen to this. Now this is, uh, I'm going to read something to you out of Ephesians 5 and 26 and 27. But, well, you know what, I might, I'll read down to it because it, uh, it, there's a picture that is shown here. It says here, I want to start at verse 22. Ephesians 5, verse 22. It's talking about husbands and wives and the church. It says, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. Now, this is what I want you to hear from this point down. Listen. Husbands, love, the wife, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church, and gave himself for it. That's important to hear. Because he said that there was a reason he made this sacrifice. And he, that, he, that he might sacrifice and cleanse it with a washing of the water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, yes. but that it should be holy and without blemish. Now listen, saints of God, this is going to be hard for us to do because we have a lot of things in this old flesh that have not been addressed yet. But the devil is constantly introducing stuff to us to do. That's why the young men are walking around with the pants down there. No self-respect, huh? There's no self-respect. That's why people are decorating themselves now. Decorating themselves and making themselves a spectacle to be seen. Not humble. Bible says do all things with moderation. We should be we should be not trying to draw attention to ourselves, but to draw attention to well, actually we are leading people to lead them to, to Jesus. That's what Brother Istawa was talking about. We have to live a life so people can come through us to Jesus Christ. Yes. Uh, we are the we are the avenue now. We are his eyes. Yes. We are his, with, we're his feet and his ears. We have to draw people to Christ. That's how you got here. Somebody in your life, somebody in your life was living a godly life while you were out there acting like a monkey. And you decided, wait a minute, 
there's a better way. And here we are right now because somebody else held on to Jesus Christ. Amen. But saints of God, listen now. We're going to go into your word. And I want you to pay attention. I don't, I don't want you to get, well, get upset because if you get upset, it will change you. Right? But if you're satisfied with where you are, you might have a problem. Because let me say something. Amen. There's one thing for sure. We can get to heaven without all of the frills that the enemy is introducing to us. Amen. But we cannot get to heaven if I mean, if we're not going to sacrifice, the Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek my face. We have to turn our attention from the world and focus on Jesus Christ. Amen. And how do we find out where Jesus is? He's in the book. Amen. And if it's in the book, says God, if it's written in the Bible, we are obligated to do that. Yes. Now, I want you to hear me now because there are things going on in the world. Now it's in the church. Amen. It's in the churches. You know, saints of God, listen, I, you know, I don't, I, I'm not talking about, but I'm seeing things. I'm not a judge, but I'm a fruit inspector. There was a young man in the church the other day. He had braids longer than a woman. Naturally, he could sit on them. And he sang this beautiful song. And he was singing, it was a beautiful song. But there was no spirit in that song. He was singing to glorify himself. Because, you know, and, and he had earrings in, he had his long hair. Bible says it's a shame for a man to have long hair. Okay, there are things that we are doing that we should not be doing. They don't seem like they're bad, but the Bible says, "Let us not uh, 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 presumptuous sin." That's what. Let us not assume anything is all right. We need to know that what we're doing is godly, because when God comes to get the church, He's only taking those who are prepared. Amen. Woo! This thing says yes, God. Yes. You've got to know that what you are doing is pleasing God without yes, any question. If there's any second guessing, guess in favor of what's written. Yes. Amen. Yes, if there's yes. anything that you know, I've got two opinions. One is biblical and one is ah, questionable. Don't mess with the questionable Amen. one. Do the one that's right. Because yes. What's written is right. And I'm telling you, saints of God, people are going to be lost. A whole lot of people oh, yeah. are going to be lost because the Bible tells me that they're going to say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, didn't yeah. me. And he's going to say, depart from me because I never knew you. Can you imagine being in church all these years and God never knew who you were because you could not line up with the word of God because you wanted to do what they were doing. Now, that's all that's coming is coming from the world. What we do now is coming from the world. So why is this a problem, preacher? Yes. Because we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Yes. There's nothing about our natural man that is right. Amen. Even the righteousness, even our good was not good enough. Yes. Saints of God, we got to get rid of the world. Dump it now. Yes. Dump it, dump it, dump it, dump it. Everything that comes from the world, we do not need. God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. Yes. So if God gives me what I need, <clears throat> give me this day. Amen. Uh, Amen. Yeah, that's all God is going to do. He's going to give you what you need today. Yes, you don't even have to worry about tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Give me what you need today. And if tomorrow comes, you're going to get what you got. You got a brand new grace and mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Monday morning when you get up, this grace and mercy is done. Amen. It got you through to tomorrow. Glory. Yeah. Be the brand new. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. I'm going to read some shit. I want you to hear the Bible. I want you to take these things to heart. Because, thank you, God, we do not want to be caught with any such thing. Yes. Okay. All right, I'm going to read to you 1 John 2. I'm just going to start reading at verses 15, 15 through 17. This is what I want you to hear. This is what the Lord is, is dealing with, with us about, okay? And it's important that we hear these things. And I understand something, God. God knows full well the difference between love and hate. Amen. Yeah, he does. So if we're not doing all of his will, that little bit that we may not be doing says that we hate him. Okay. So there is no there is no in between. It's only love or hate. Uh, there's no I like you or you're fine with me. Or, you know, it's love or hate. Now listen to this. This is in the Bible, John, first John two, verse fifteen. It says here, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Thanks to God, this is Bible. Amen. This is Bible. Amen. 
And we have to be careful what we bring out, what we take out of the world. Everything is not for us. Everything is not for us. All things are lawful, but all everything is not expedient. So again, it may not be wrong, but if God speaks against it, saints of God, we got to let it go. It is the truth anyhow, because we cannot take a chance on missing heaven, messing around with something that I'm not sure about. So again, the 16th verse says up here, for all that is in the world, listen, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. All right, so listen, where, where, where did these things come from? We see what we, we see something and we like it. The flesh says, oh, this would be nice on me. Yeah. And then, I, then the pride comes in because now I want to do what I see. And now everybody's going to see me and I'm going to be like them. Okay, now keep this in mind. People dress up, <coughs> dress themselves up in order to show themselves as something they've seen. Uh, just for an example, if you are a police officer, you're going to put on a policeman's uniform and look like a police officer. Okay? This is a sensitive point. If you are not a prostitute, you should not appear like a prostitute. Amen. 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 Yeah. yeah. If you ain't, a, if you, if you're not a, a pimp daddy, <laughs> you shouldn't be dressing like a pimp daddy. Amen. 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 That's why the Lord tells us to be modest. Amen. Amen. That's why we should be modest. You know, back in the day, I don't see him too much anymore. But back in the day, when when church was was uh, a fashion show, you know, you dress up on Sunday so you be seen on Sunday. The mothers used to come into church with hats on. Bro. <laughs> yeah. Them hats, you know, you had to look around and try to find a preacher. You know, but everybody would dress up on Sunday because it was a fashion show. What we need to do, Saint of God, is find out what God says about that. Amen. And the Amen. Bible is teaching us now that we, he, look, anything, anything of the world, huh, anything of the world is against God. Amen. Huh? It is not of God. Now, this is what I want us to understand. When we came into the world, there was nothing righteous about us at all. So whatever we were doing in the world, we have to stop that and start doing this. And what is this? It is that newborn experience. That's why the Lord came in. The elder was, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the promoted you. Brother Esteban. Uh, Brother Esteban was talking about that lifted up Jesus. Now that started here. It said, if I be lifted up. As in, well, first of all, if, if, as the serpent was lifted in the wilderness, that's what he's talking about. So the serpent was lifted up in order to forgive Israel of their transgression. Jesus was lifted up so that we could be saved from our transgression. But now, how do we lift him up now? He's up. He's already hung. He's already done it. But now we lift him up in praise. Yes. Every day we praise and glorify yes. him. Yes. 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 That's what I'm talking about. That's why this thing, this church was almost over when the young man was testifying. Yes. Because that is exactly what this is all about. Yes. Giving God what's due him. Yes. And then, uh, uh, what, what was that song you sang there, Elder? What was that song there? Elder, Elder Walsh, what was that song? Prepare me a sanctuary. Yeah, and then and then, then what's what's the verse in there? I will exalt them yes. every day. Yes. Lift him up every day, yes. and he will provide what we need in this life. Yes. We don't need anything from the devil. Nothing from the devil. Amen. Everything that the devil brought to our attention was to destroy us yes. and to undermine God's plan for us. Yes. That's exactly what happened. Because in the Eve, in the Garden of Eden, all the enemy did was said to Eve, did God say, and he was saying to her, well, yeah, he may have said that, but he knew it was something else. If you now, you know, you know, you, you're going to be like God. It's okay. So he's appealing not only to her eyes because the fruit looked good, not only to her flesh because, you know, this thing don't look so bad. You know, let me try it. Okay, she ate it. Now she became wise. No, she didn't actually. She, she became knowledgeable. <laughs> she didn't become wise. But those three things happened to her. And now it's happening to us. Why do people decorate themselves? Why do people change their appearance? Because they want to glorify themselves. Yeah. yeah. There's no other reason. Yeah. Listen, when I get dressed, I have to dress myself with this in mind. 
What am I doing this for? Yes. Who am I doing it for? Yes. And why am I doing it? Yes. Let me know this. So if I'm dressing myself to please God, yes. I'm going to look like God's representative yes. Yes. when I'm finished dressing myself. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So yeah. Like, listen, so we got to find out what does God want and what does anyone want. Okay? Yes. And again, and the world passes away. That's why, listen, all this stuff that we're doing to please and glorify the natural man, it's all going to die. It's all going to yes. go back to the yes. dust. Yes. The spirit, the life that's in us is yes. going to live yes. forever. Yes. But it depends on how we address the life that we're living now yes. as to where the spirit is going to spend eternity. Yes. Because no sooner than you leave this life, yes. you're in eternity, either in heaven or in hell. Yes. Yes. There ain't no middle ground. Yes. And let me say this to you, saints of God. Why would you take a chance? Yes. Why would yes. you run the risk of not being able to do God's will? Well, because yes. if you miss heaven, you're going to remember all that. Yes. yes. Lord. And there won't be any way to get out. No way yes, to escape. Lord. Listen to what I'm saying to you. Yes, Lord. Listen, look, give that devil back all the stuff that you didn't take. Yes. Everything that you thought was right. Give yes. it back to him. You're hearing this today. This is not. Listen. Yes. For all that is in the world. That's everything that's yes. in the world. Everything that we were born into was going to kill us and send us to hell. If yes. it had not been that, Jesus could have stayed in heaven. Yes. But the only way we could escape hell yes. was he had to come and pay the price oh, yes. for our sin. Yes. 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 Huh? And now we're going to dress up like the world. Yes. Huh? So that we can be like the world. Yes. Huh? Yeah, so we can be like somebody else. Now be like Jesus. Yes. Dress up in Christ Jesus. Yes. Put me on the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. And make not provision for the flesh. Yes. That's what the Bible says. Hallelujah. How good God Almighty yes. said to God. And this thing will work for you now. Yes. Sometimes you want to get something from the God and you're not doing God's will. It might just be a little thing, but that little thing is going to keep you out. Yes. So all unrighteousness is sin. Yes. Good God Almighty. Yes. Uh, Jesus. Amen. All right, let's go. Amen. James. Yes. Four and four. You know these. Yes. You know all these verses of scripture. Problem is, we have trouble living on this. Yes. Because the, the devil has such an influence over us. Yes. We were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. Yes. He trained us. He taught us everything we know yes. in the world. And God came to change that thing for us. James 4. Yes. 4 and 4. Amen. Okay. I'm going to read down to it. And this is, this is what you get when you don't serve God. <laughs> Listen to this. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lust that, that war in your members? That's the devil. Yes. The devil makes us do these things. The devil makes me upset. It makes me yell at my wife sometimes. It makes her yell at me. I know y'all don't do that, but you know. All right. I wish it maybe every once in a while it might slip up, you know. But again, these things happen. Why? Because we're in we're in a temple that is controlled by carnality. Yes, man. Yeah, that's it. And it's still that's spirit working against us. Okay. You lust and have not, you kill and desire to have. And cannot obtain, ye fight in war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Mm -hmm. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask him this, that ye may consume it upon your lust. See, look, he's saying, look, you pray, but you pray the wrong prayers. Yeah. Yeah. We got to learn how to pray like God wants yeah. us to pray. Yeah. 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 Pray his yeah. word back. Don't be yeah. 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 going to cause some damage. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. cut this one off and, and do this, that, and so that. No, no. we're praying, 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 and praying to benefit, praying to yeah. bring somebody yeah. out of sin. Yeah. Pray yeah. for that one who just yeah. Yeah. offended me. Yeah. Pray that that one will come to himself. Yeah. Yeah. Lord. Yet, ye adulterers and adulteresses, spiritual adultery now. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Amen. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Saints, God, listen. This is listen. If you're going to continue to take up with anything of the world, you're missing out on God's fullness. You understand what I'm saying? Because He has a fullness to offer you. We're at a point where we, you know, we can sing and we understand what we're doing, but we cannot rest there. 
we have to continue to press past that place where we've achieved. Yes. Because, all right, I don't lie anymore. I don't do this. I don't drink. The elder was talking about the drinkingness. And, and we don't do all these things that we used to do. The Lord has brought us out of those things. All right, but what about those little things? Amen. What, Amen. About, what about that Amen. inability to produce them? Yes. 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 What about, you know, what, you know what, what about that spirit that comes in you when you're driving and somebody cuts you off? Yeah. Right. You don't want to say hallelujah. You want to <laughs> you know, cut me off. You know, where, where you get your license from? Uh, but again, those spirits can't be in here. Amen. They can't be in here because the Lord is going to judge the very intent of the heart. Yes. Yes. We may not have even spoken it, but it's in there to be spoken at some time in the future. Look, Santa God, this is critical now. Amen. So listen, the only way we can be free of this is we have to completely immerse ourselves in Jesus. Yes. Yes. I mean, in Jesus, just forget about the world around you. Forget about what people do to you. Can this, consider this. Jesus knew that everything that he went through, he was going to go through before he got here. Amen. And he went through it to show us that it can be done in human flesh, yes. but only through him. Yes. So that's why we were water baptized in his name. Yes. We got went down in the water. We came up out of the water. We, did it. we had a clean slate. He filled us with his spirit so that he can live the righteousness in us yes. that, we, that was required, and that he may present to himself a church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. So he did this for his own self. Why do you say that? Because he is God. Yes, you yes, know? Yes. And all this was done so God could glor be glorified in all that we do. All right, let me just read that a little bit further. Do you think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusts to envy? That's why you can't pay attention to the spirit. You know, and you know, listen to this. Back in the day, when I got sick, my mom went down in the woods. She didn't go to the drugstore. She went down in the woods and pulled up something out the ground. And came in and doctored that thing, worked that thing, and I, I left I, whatever it was. I left it well. But now man is going to get involved and play God. So all these things that we get from the pharmacist got some kind of artificial chemical in it to stimulate you a little bit, but it won't heal you. You know, and think about it. Before mankind began to mess up with all these pesticides, you didn't hear about horses and mules getting cancer. No. You know, they just eat all, all the grass they wanted, and they just healthy and strong. You know, people was eating back in the day when we was eating from the earth. Amen. Yeah, we was eating from the earth. But now you you got to be careful. Now, by the time you finish reading the side effects, you can't just I don't know what this. My goodness, you got thirteen side effects. Which one of these I'm gonna die from? Yeah. You know? But it's because the enemy, keep this in mind, is still trying to undermine God. Amen. Because people put more trust in the pharmaceuticals Amen. than prayer. Amen. Because Amen. prayer is what heals. Jesus is the healer. Amen. So we put our confidence and our trust in those things instead of in God. And God wants us to consider him what? First. Yes. In all of our ways, acknowledge him. Amen. Huh? Yeah. Seeking first. first. The kingdom of God. Yes. Okay, let me go a little further. I'm going to get you out of here. But he giveth grace, wherefore he saith, God resists the proud. And that, listen, that proud person is a person who wants to do what they want to do without changing because of God. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. That's what, that's what, uh, 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 in, um, when the Lord was telling Solomon, if my people, right? Because he said, look, you are my people, but you've turned. And I need you to repent and come back. So again, it, 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 look, he said he resists the proud, but yes. giving grace to the humble. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, yes. and he will flee from you. And draw nigh to God, and she'll draw nigh to you. Okay. And then it says, you cleanse your hands, you sinners. That's us. We have to do that. Okay. We do the cleansing. Okay. Because we're the ones who have the dirt on us. The word of God is going to clean us up. Romans 8 and verse 5. Amen. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Did you hear that? Amen. Because if we give ourselves to the Lord, that's why he says, present your body as a living sacrifice. Yes. Yes. Let's be holy. And then he's in charge. Yes. Elder Carmack used to tell us, look, once the Holy Ghost comes, that's it. Amen. It's out of your hands. You don't have to live. You don't have to try to live now. Just let the Holy Ghost do what the Holy Ghost does. Okay? It says here, 
but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Say, listen to this. Would you want to go to hell for a pair of earrings? <laughs> Think about it. Just that, because that's something that might not be. You get. I'm going well, to read something to you, just so you can hear it for yourself. Huh? Ooh. This word of God is something such a God. It's right by itself, but it's hard to take because the flesh cannot deal with the spiritual things. He says, for they that are after the flesh be minded things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit are things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity, that's the enemy, against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in, that are in the flesh cannot please God. Now this means that if you're in the flesh in any way, any percentage, any degree of serving the devil over God is a violation of God's requirement. Amen. Listen, now listen to this. We're all guilty of that right now. Amen. But if I have a mind to get out of what I'm going through, Amen. and I'm seeking God to get out of that, that is your victory march. Amen. Because listen, God knows that we got trouble. God knows. That's why, we, that's why grace is here to cover us for the things that we have not yet uh, finished cleaning up in our lives. Mm -hmm. And when the Lord comes, we're still going to be ugly in his eyes, but we're going to be pure and right through the blood. Mm -hmm. Through the blood. When he sees us through the blood, he's going to see us just as if we have never Glory. sinned. That is the justification. And that's why you have to be aware of what you're doing. <clears throat> And understand why you're doing what you're doing. Because if what you're doing is not to please God, but to satisfy something of the world, you got a problem. Amen. It's just that simple. So all you have to do is say to Jesus, look, I'm tired of this. Look, I got tired of drinking and smoking, and I didn't give it up right away. But, you know, the Lord started working. Uh, what did he start doing? He started taking the fun out of it. You know, my little, uh, uh, I, I graduated to uh, Heineken. I think it was good beer. I had moved up to Heineken. You know, and I was drinking the Heineken. It was so good. And all of a sudden, I popped one of them things. What's wrong with this beer? And the same thing happened with a reaper. I said, somebody messing with my, with my, with my reaper. Uh, no, the Lord was taking it away. Because I had asked him to take it away. And he was taking it away. He'll begin to change your mind. Yes. 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 Listen, it ain't nothing for us. All he wants us to do is want to come out. Yes. That's it. Because we can't get out on our own. So he wants us, and then he'll start. What does scripture say up here? Draw nigh to God. And what? Oh, he'll draw nigh to God. That's the truth anyhow, says God. That's the truth anyhow. God's going to do just what he said. He's just going to do it. But he wants us to want to him to do it. Okay, let me finish up now. Now then, it is no more... I that do it, but the sin dwelleth in me. Listen. Mm -hmm. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. No good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. Don't you all have that problem? Uh, yeah. That, that, did I tell you? I was 75 years old when I got rid of my that, that stronghold. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And I wasn't trying for a long time. But once I started trying, then it became a struggle. Mm -hmm. And I needed Jesus. Good yeah, God Lord, yes, and he stepped in and did what I needed him to do. Yeah, Listen to this. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I do, with the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. That's why you can't be trying to beat up people for doing things against you. Don't Amen. give me get upset with and pray and ask God to change that old spirit to say, Yeah, I find it alone that when I would do good, evil is present with me. I'm going to take you to First Timothy. And this little this little uh, caption I put on here. Things to consider. He said, everything that comes from the world. Okay, we want to consider these things. Because thanks to God, the time is running out. We just don't have the time that we used to have. It's been close to 2,000 years since Jesus said he was coming back. And he left on record what we should look for when he was coming back. Uh, uh, 1 Timothy 2 and 5. For there is one God 
and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Whereunto I am ordained a preacher, and this is Paul talking, and an apostle. I speak the truth in Christ and lie not, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Now, Here's the part I want you to know. Now, listen, this is talking about women. And this also applies to us men. Because now men have to be like women. And women have to be like men. But here's what the Bible says. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broidered hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Thanks for God. Amen. That's the Bible. Amen. Amen. It just is the Bible. And those things that he just listed here are not necessary for you to live holy. And, uh, and listen, the broidered hair, these are the braids. Amen. You got more, you got preachers with the braids. Amen. You got more braids on the on people. And it is not, it's not even their hair. They got somebody else's hair. Yeah, it might be, it might be carpet fibers. You don't know what it is. But it's not hair. And now look at it. Look what color it is. It's all kinds of different colors. They, they're just doing whatever they want to do. And it's because it is the influence of the devil. You cannot criticize the people because they are being led by a spirit. Even those people who are engaging themselves in sexuality, uh, homosexuality and all that. This is a spirit that's driving them. So that's why we don't judge them. We pray for them. That God will open up their eyes and their understanding. And again, this is just the truth anyhow. And there's no way that we can get around this. And, you know, I'm not going to read the rest of it because that creates a problem for a lot of people too. But this is what God is showing for us today. Listen to the list. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Okay. That takes away those, those gaudy outfits with shamefacedness. Okay, that same face is, is your face, not Satan's face. Amen. What are you talking about, preacher? Not all the decoration, not the lipstick and the eyeshadow. You know, if you see some eyebrows now, some eyebrows, they look like paintbrushes. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> yeah, them eye, the eyelashes, yeah, them things, is, them things is look like paintbrushes, you know? And it's, what, what's the point? Now, what's the point? I got eyelashes. Huh? What's the point? I got eyebrows. Huh? What's the point? I got, look, I got a good set of teeth. I don't need no, no silver uh, plating on them. You know, I don't need all that because God completed me with what I have. And listen, I have a head full of hair. It may not be as much as I used to have, but I got some of my own hair. Huh? So I don't need no toupee. I don't need it. And your daughters don't need nobody else's hair either. Look, work with what you got. Amen. Yeah, God knew just what you were going to be and how much hair you were going to have when you left here. Amen. This is it. Work with what you got. Listen to the Bible now. I'm just Amen. telling you. Telling you. And doing themselves in modest apparel with shame faces and sobriety. Not with broidered hair, so there goes the braids. Not gold, there goes the jewelry. Pearls and costly array. But which becometh women professing godliness with good works. One more. I'm giving you one more. You know where I'm going. Peter has something to say about this too. Amen. And it's for us now, for us to think about it, huh? for us to think about what the scripture has said and then consider what you want to do with what the scripture has said. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes. And don't let nobody judge you in what you're doing. Amen. Because nobody knows your heart. Amen. Because see, this is the thing. We may hear the word of God and desire to do God's will, but we have not come up to some things yet. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's why it's important that we hear what God wants Amen. and that we can ask God to work with us on these things because he understands how you got into it yeah. and he understands that he's the only one who's going to get you out of it. Yeah. And if it's not necessary for you to come out, he's going to make you comfortable in where you are yeah. because if you do what you do in faith, it counts for you as a, as, as, as a righteousness for you because you're doing it in faith without any conviction as to what you're doing based on what the word says and what you're doing. Yeah. So be careful though. Amen. Don't don't let the devil trick you into thinking, yeah, you can do you don't have to do what God should do. That's what happened to Eve. And that's why we're in this mess. Mm -hmm. First Peter three and one. 
Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, listen to this, who is adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair and of wearing of gold or putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible even the ornament of a meek and a quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. Mm -hmm. For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God yes. adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. Okay, so this is what I'm saying to you. This is exactly what we're saying. Okay, husbands, let me put it in the seven first. Likewise, your husbands, mm -hmm. dwell with them according to knowledge, yes. giving honor unto the wife, as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that uh, that your prayers be not ended. Okay, again, we all have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to, to, to do the scripture. If you have a wife, you got to treat your wife the way you want to be treated. Amen. If you have a husband, you got to do by him what the scripture says. Do Amen. reverence him. He may be a buzzard, but reverence him. Amen. You know, speak, speak well of him to the kids. Okay? Amen. Because, you know, if it is, trust him as a good husband Amen. or a good dad. Amen. You, know, you speak well of him. Teach your kids to love their fathers. Yes. 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 Your wives, you, you wives, be subject to uh, you Live a godly life before an unsaved husband. Because that life before him might help to draw him. Amen. So again, we have Amen. to understand, say to God, we want to do what the scripture says. Mm -hmm. It's just that simple. Whatever the Bible says. And this is where we have a chance now. We've heard this, and this is not the first time we've heard it. But the reason I believe, and I'm pretty confident, that the reason that the Lord brought this to our attention today is because he is soon, say to God, listen, he is soon to come. He is soon to come to get the church.